Yes, hello everyone. So <clears throat> welcome to the next video. So moving on from what we saw previously with accumulations and distributions. Um, as I explained in the market cycle video, there's something called reaccumulation and redistribution. So what it is, is when you start to see price get to a certain point of interest, but instead of uh, distributing or accumulating as expected, there's a slightly different schematic. So these schematics are simply continuation trades for more upside or more downside movement, obviously depending on um, what type of market structure you're on and are we uh, uptrending or downtrending. Uh, when it comes to reaccumulations, you've got this. Point, um, buying climax occurring at the top. Then you've got the automatic rally coming straight back down potentially to this breaker block or you know just an area right there. Then the difference is from distribution, which we would expect to go down instead, is with this, instantly we start to see buying climax and the ST, it creates either um, a form of straight liquidity, so equal highs, or a very similar zone. So it might be just above or just below. Now, the thing is, you won't know whether this is a distribution or a reaccumulation in the beginning. But the thing with Wyckoff is it's very hard to detect whether, you know, which type of schematic you're having in the first few stages. You're only going to really know when you come towards the end of the schematic. And that's when you need to be active. Because the thing is, um, it can be very misleading and that's why it's, it's quite advanced for, for a lot of people. And, you know, you really need to spend time looking at it and understanding how it works. The difference is here, we are stuck within this range right here between the AR, PSY, buying climax, ST, we're stuck in that range. Price tends to just consolidate, 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 perhaps maybe a bit lower then it reaches, I don't know, some kind of point of interest, either that one or that one. You start to see some short-term buy-in to the top, gets to this point of interest, but we know there's liquidity at the top right there. Now that gives us confirmation that, okay, we're gonna be taking that. Now, what we see is this uh, part of the schematic called the creek. What that is, is we get to that point of interest right there and then start to downturn just slightly but we're always above this point right here that we saw in this range. We don't go anywhere lower than the AR because if we do, we start to see this. Boom. That is your confirmation of lower, of a lower low. Now, what can we expect if this was a distribution? We might go, okay, boom, down. Or we might take that liquidity as expected and then react down like that. However, for reaccumulations, you go down and then take that liquidity, go to the top, get some kind of reaction. And as soon as we start to see this massive push up, this is when I would recommend to get into the trade because let's just say we had this. I'm just gonna draw it again. Boom. We hit that there, got down went here, do you think this could still be a distribution? Yes, that's a valid reason. You know, that's a valid point. You could still go down and then distribute instead. However, with this, you've, got, you've now got that confirmation that you're going back up and then you've got to try and look for an entry. Now, the thing with uh, reaccumulations, especially the ending of it happens very quickly. So you've got to be active and just have a clear understanding what is going on with price structure. If this, if this zone, let's just say we had an order block right there, and this is our zone right here, and we're doing a consolidation there, you know, we could expect price to go down and that's a successful distribution. But if we've got reasons for price to go even further up, and we're now not respecting this point of interest, and we're going up, even further up, then we can expect price to keep on going up. Now, personally, I would really, um, if you're struggling to understand what it means, it's 
simple market structure. Just understand that we're still in a bullish movement. We've got no break of structure to the downside. We haven't got any there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Price is still going bullish. So if you were to say to me, okay, I'm going to sell this, I would say, why, have, you know, you've got no confirmations of it at all. And that is going to be the game changer in our, um, in our trading. It's the confirmation side of the strategy. You've got to understand true price structure and true price movements. All right, so let's move on to the redistributions. Again, it's the same, same concepts, but you're in a downtrend instead. You've reached all the block right here. Potential area for price to go up, but no, you start to see still downward momentum. There's no break up. There's no break up. So you need to look for that last point of supply. This is the key zone. This is the, the move that will make you money, especially if you're on the lower time frames, which is what Wyckoff is used a lot for. Because on the higher time frames, it doesn't appear as much. But uh, the strategy here is to use it near a point of interest, see what's happening. Um, but this last point of supply or this phase uh, D, I think it's called on any other, uh, any of the other schematics, this is the point that you need to try to get into. Now, what you've got to try to understand is this, like I said before, price will move crazy and just move straight down. So you've got to try and place yourself into a trade. Once you know you're moving downwards, um, price may not go all the way back up like that. It won't. There's been many times where in the beginning of my journey, I would wait for that type of reaction to happen, but it just simply would not. So you're going to have to either enter some kind of breaker, a lower order block. So not that one there, but this one here, or just liquidity void and keep your stop loss higher. So if we're on the lower time frame, I'm going to be honest, this is good enough because a lot of times this might only be a five pip stop loss. Five pip stop loss. And imagine you ride out the whole wave for the week. You are potentially going to be earning uh, at least a one to 10, one to 20. The highest I think I hit within, you know, a day uh, was a one to 30 something. And obviously that's because my stop loss was very tight and, you know, price would enter like this, for example. Um, yeah. So just, just reaffirming what I said, the main difference is the structure inside the range. Reaccumulation will usually create double tops and no move to the top. Uh, it will occur far less than uh, normal distributions, maybe harder to spot as well because it's the understanding of, of that. It's a continuation to the upside that will help. So you look for the liquidity, you look for where price is trying to go towards, where price is reacting off. If you've got no lower low, no breaker structure down, no breaker structure down. Of course, you're still seeing bullish uh, price action and this liquidity at the top. So yeah, guys, I hope I um, made this a bit more clearer between reaccumulation and distributions. Obviously, it's the same way around with the other tab schematics as well. And yeah, so the uh, distribution, on the distribution side of things, uh, they're far easier to spot because you've got this point of interest We're right there. Uh, we start looking for movement there. We got that run on liquidity right there, takes their stop losses, moves down. Then when you've got that move down, that official move down below everything, that's when you know you're in the last phase and that's where you've got to try enter. Now, this could be a breaker block. Like I said before, liquidity avoid, whatever it is, just please go on the charts, test this out. Um, stick to one pair for now. For example, go on EU, see what happens at every single point of interest, see how this happened. I mean, you could call this Wyckoff, you could call this break of structure and, re and um, reaction entry. Whatever it might be, it's all the same thing. It's that clear understanding of market structure and how it works. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.